Atari was founded in 1972 by a 26-year-old, six-foot-four-inch research engineer for Ampex named Nolan K. Bushnell. He set up shop in a Santa Clara home in the bedroom of one of his two daughters. Within two years, Bushnell had sold more than 10,000 Pong games, providing powerful competition for the pinball machine, the pool table, and the traditional board games. It was a change that would remake amusement arcades everywhere. In 1977, Warner Communications acquired the company for about $30 million. Bushnell received half. With his big cash in, he completed the image of the high-tech entrepreneur, replacing forever the idea that founders who built companies stayed with them from birth to death. And so over the years, we developed some very, very sophisticated ways of tracking human factors before we knew the name human factors. We says, we, we call it a gameplay interface, you know. But in fact, it was human factors uh, pushed to an extreme. And I think that it's not by accident that Steve Jobs worked at Atari uh, because he understood some of the human factors that we, uh, that was part of it, that ultimately turned into the Macintosh, which has been the human factors uh, winner, and even though an awful lot of it was uh, developed at Park, uh, Steve knew it when he saw it. I called up Bill Hewlett when I was 12 years old, and he lived in Palo Alto. His number was still in the phone book, and he answered the phone himself. He said, yes, hi, I'm Steve Jobs. I'm 12 years old. I, I'm a student in high school, and I want to build a frequency counter, and I was wondering if you had any spare parts I could have. And he laughed, and he, he gave me the spare parts to build this frequency counter, and he gave me a job that summer in Hewlett Packard, working on the assembly line, putting nuts and bolts together on frequency counters. He got me a job in the place that built them. And I was in heaven. 